up, guys? Other side pod. We here with Baja Banks today. You know, it's me by myself today. So <laughs> let's see how this shit go. You feel me? Back to what we saying, you feel me? Just cut you off. You was talking about Pisces and shit. You into horoscopes and shit like that? So let me tell you, it's not even so much that... <clears throat> So much that I'm into horoscopes, but like my friends be mm-hmm. really into it and like all that moon stuff. And let me, say, I'm I'm serious. And like, you you I never understood. I I never I still don't understand none of that moon stuff. But like my friend put all my stuff in, mm-hmm. and they like said I have a Scorpio moon moon or something. I see that. And it's crazy because I'm literally like a lot of Scorpios are like attracted to me. Like a lot of my friends are Scorpios. Like it's crazy. My sister's Scorpio. Your best friend is Scorpio. It's I was about to say your best friend is Which Scorpio. which 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 one? I don't know. No, the one you met is not a Scorpio. She not? She a Gemini. She's crazy. One of them was a Scorpio. I don't She's know. She's crazy. My mom is a Scorpio, and one of them said they was a Scorpio. She's crazy. Yeah. Probably her sister. Yeah. But she ain't no. She a Gemini. Gemini's is crazy. She crazy. I don't know about none of that shit. Look, I was trying to find my moon and sun shit for like a year now. But they was like, you got to know the time you was born. Yeah, 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 you do. And I lost my birth certificate. So. Oh, okay. I called my mama. And I was like, My mom don't know. <laughs> my mom said you was born in the night. <laughs> I know what time my baby was born. My mom said you was born at night. And I just took that as, fuck it. I'm I don't know what that means. She's like, it was so many years ago. But, you know, on a music tip, like, yo, how you even started rapping? When that came about? So, y'all, I'm not going to lie, like, um, I feel like I've always really been, like, musically inclined. Like, Mm -hmm. I used to sing in a choir when I was younger. I used to play the alto sax. The church choir, the school choir, the citywide choir. I used to sing at the symphony center. I used to have a program there. (laughs) Not for real. Um, And I used to play the piano. I used to play the alto sax. Like, Like you could actually play the piano. Yeah, like, I know Jingle Bells by heart. Jingle Bells is crazy. B, 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 D, G, A, B. Like... For real, that was my favorite song. I ain't know shit chill. you just said. You just said letters. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb is the notes. All right. And <clears throat> so, I mean, like, it wasn't weird to me. I fake had made a song like two, three years before that with one of my friends, like just sound class. So like, we was just playing. That was rapping, or you were singing on it? We was rapping, <laughs> and people was like, "Man, y'all, y'all, y'all need to really shoot a video to this." And the song was so trash. Mm-hmm. It was really so trash. Like, you know how people just hype you up type shit? And I was like, y'all are lying. I'm not doing this. I was in college, too, at the same time. I was like, I always just tell myself, like, I had no choice but to be smart because I didn't have no cloud? talents. Yeah, it is. What's the name of it? We're looking that up after this. What's the name <laughs> we of can't. We can't. I don't even know, but it was t- it's two songs. It's terrible. You still going by Baja Banks back then? I was going by, I think it say Baja Bolden, which because Bolden <laughs> is <not. laughs> you Good thing you switched that shit up. That's not it. Bolden, because it's like on social media, that was my name, because that's my, that's my real name, like mm-hmm. Bolden. But like even through high school, all my teachers called me Baja. Like I wrote Baja on my paperwork, even though it's not my government name. Like everybody called me Baja. Yeah, me too. My so, government name is weird as fuck. I was going by Kwani my whole life. My government name is how I got banks. Just know that. Ah, here we go with that. Just know that. And so when I was in college, I decided to let my friend peer pressure me Mm -hmm. when they had that Casanova challenge. And yeah, Herb had did his shit. And my friend was like, you should do it. You should be a rapper because they always say I be talking crazy and I do. Mm -hmm. And like, that's why they be like, I can tell you write your own shit because it's how you talk. <clears throat> and so I did it and I posted it and I really didn't think I was going to get good feedback because like Chicago is really hard for female artists especially and so we don't we don't really get that platform that men do like really to make it out of Chicago the niggas you see make it out of Chicago like they in the hood rapping like they got the whole hood behind them that's mm-hmm. the type of shit that turn you up YouTube is really geared towards men. Women, we don't get that because we don't sit at home and watch videos all day. So, all right, that's not our market. Mm-hmm. So it's even harder because we don't have those platforms to push ourselves. And I put that shit on my Instagram, and everybody was like, "Dang!" They were jacking I, it. They, they was like, "They was like, why you ain't tell me you can rap?" And I just tell people like, I never said I was a rapper. I never. I don't even be calling myself a rapper. I be calling myself an artist because I feel like I got so many lanes. I do that shit too. But I don't I like that rapper like, title. It puts you yeah, in a box. That's what I'm saying, and that's when people age out the game. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I just, 
I, I feel like I could do anything I put my mind to. I was never good at being told what I couldn't do. So anything I try, like, I don't like to fail, and I don't like to struggle in front of people, so I be putting my all into it. Nah, you got a little Leo in you. You got to. Because I'm a Leo, and I sort of, God, I be moving like I could do anything. But on a college tip, like, that's crazy because a lot of artists didn't even go to college. Like, what was your major? Like, what you had planned when you was in college? I'm at, I was actually a double major. I graduated. I um just graduated last December. Associates or bachelors? My bachelors. Double uh -huh. major. Nah, hi. Biology and sustainability because I was going to school to be a Woo! surgical dentist. And I wanted to develop sustainable properties. <laughs> <laughs> Real way off the spectrum, right? No. But the, the, the crazy thing about it is, see, my grandfather was a dentist, and growing up, mm -hmm. I used to say, believe really, like my grandpa was the only man that could afford me, so I needed to afford myself one day. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna do what he did, mm -hmm. and I was gonna make that money, and that's what was gonna happen. Nobody like dentists though. <laughs> they come, they fuck up your teeth. They it don't matter. But this is what I'm gonna tell you. So first, I went to school for law, mm -hmm. and I realized that, that not lawyers it. are too plentiful. And all innocent people can't afford me anyway. Word. The thing with dentists, you'll always need a dentist. So, and the thing about that, government assistance will pay a dentist even if you can't. So you're always making money. Damn. You'll always need a dentist. You'll always need a doctor. Like, that stuff. You want to start your own little shit, though? My like, grandpa had his own practice, and he just wanted me to walk into it. Oh, shit. So you probably just walk that, up that, in there. Yeah, shut up. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> That's crazy, but... So how was the whole college experience being that you was making music and shit, like just being on campus and shit? So I, I'm from Chicago and like I went to school downtown. Mm -hmm. It ain't really like no big campus. Like I went to private school. I would go home. I mean, I would go to school, go home, go to school, go home. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't no, oh, I'm trying to kick it in though. Like, but you don't look like you was like a dweeb in Chicago. I know people in college was pulling up on you like, yo, this is you, da da da. Like, <laughs> come on, they get like that. <clears throat> I was like, I. I, I don't I can't even say that I haven't been a dweeb, but like I was a bookworm, like nerd. I growing cannot see up. that. Like I did robotics, like you know where you build the robots yeah, out of Legos. I can't see that shit. No, I got the trophies. Don't don't stun on me. I got first, the, second, third. I got first all the time. Don't stun on oh, me. You on I'm going I was going crazy. Literally. Still mm -hmm. got this shit. Like I I literally tell people that's what I'm saying, like, from looking on me on the outside, like people mm -hmm. be thinking like I'm I don't want to say stupid, but like nah, more not IG model. I'm being real. Yeah, no, no, no. I was and IG I was model. always getting that. Oh, you IG model, IG model, and that, and yeah, I did turn into an IG model because people like perceived me as that, yeah. and it was it was helping me make money. Like I started modeling for boutiques, and they was paying me, and that was making me get seen, mm -hmm. and that was even before I ever started rapping. Word. So that's why I kind of like had slowed down on the IG model shit because it was hard transferring from like being known as an IG model to, to a being rapper. a rapper because then they was like, you IG model trying to rap. Definitely. <clears throat> like everybody else. Like but saying. that's crazy because like, I I mean, ain't no now, but you don't come off like you from Chicago. It's like you got this weird ass New York aura about you. And it's like, you did <laughs> you know spend the time. You know vibes? That's how true it is. You spent time you in New York. So how New York treated you? What was that about? I love New York like it's my second home. I used to be here every weekend working. Every weekend like I love, even now I love New York. I don't know what it is, it's just like it speaks to me. But you know like Chicago and New York mesh really well. Like, yeah, I heard we're that not, a lot. We're not that far off from like the type of people. Mm -hmm. And so that's why like we're so close. So it, it, it's not, and like that. I never felt uncomfortable here because I felt like I was at home like, we rude. We got bad attitudes. We nah, bump bitches back nah, too. Nah, y'all nicer than us though. I ain't go front. I really realized New York is like the rudest yeah, city Yeah, but y'all, y'all be rude. And sometimes y'all can't even back that shit up. <laughs> we be right. rude and we be coming at your throat. Like, you right. I don't care. Three bitches, two bitches. I'm knocking two of y'all out on the way down. I'm not taking no help. <laughs> going crazy. Like, y'all got girls out here that'll be talking shit. And you bust off of them. And they, ah. Like, what are you so nah, like? Nah, I swear Y'all be talking crazy. Y'all don't be crazy for real, though. Nah, I don't know about them. No, no, I'm some of y'all, I'm, I'm, talk I'm not even I'm talking, I'm not that, talking like. about, I'm not talking about niggas, but like, bro, and from my standpoint as being a woman, mm -hmm. and look, I'm hitting y'all, like, my standpoint as being a woman, like, they don't really be about all that shit they be talking. Nah, I swear to God, they like, don't. Like, we talk that gangster shit because we really be gangsters out there, like. But it's like how we were talking about earlier, off screen, you feel me? Mm. It depends on who you run into because every part of New York is different. Just like how you was explaining Chicago, it's north, out west, east, southeast, like shit like that. Like, it's 
Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx. I ain't gonna front. You run to the wrong Bronx, bitch. Is joining up dirty one. Yeah, you gonna have a problem. Like that's what they coming outside to do. Like you feel me? But I feel like that's what I love about even being from the city. It's mad different vibes, you feel me, all in mm. one. Nobody's ever the same. Nobody from the same place, but you feel me? We all doing the same no, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah, son, like, I don't know. I find that crazy. Like, so you start off bottle girl, dancing, and shit like that. Not dancing, like video vixen, bottle girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you transition to rap. But when you transition to rap, you took that bottle girl shit cold turkey like how you went about like that? at the beginning i i i mean i can't say that i just quit cold turkey i guess i did i'm not gonna lie i did i, I was about to say I you did. definitely did the way you were saying I it before i did and it it had more to do with than just that because it's just i felt like the club at one point just had nothing else to offer me like i had been Progressing, it's not even like I worked in the club for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's just when you on top, you got to get out. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Like, 110%. I was up, so I was like, I got to go. It's time for me. This is my time. Like, you do this for as long as you got to. And I love the club. Like, it really became like a home to me. Like, them people in my family to this day. And they really helped with my like rap career like they would play my music they would make me perform there I'm like gonna say you perform there bro, promote hell fucking yeah club <laughs> of chicago y'all hell yeah uh, yo the super it. chicago came out of that i, I thought you was gonna say g at the end word of my mother look look now you tweak it <laughs> come we on. like g stop tweaking exactly y'all y'all run that word up a lot yeah that's like how y'all think we be saying g son. stand for getting money that's what i'm saying that's what that stands for no no that's what it stands for for gangsta. me i'm saying we always use that because i'm getting money <laughs> but no like all right so a lot of, well for those of the, who don't know your first major cosign was chance right yes it was so how did channel how did that even happen chance the motherfucking rapper so it's crazy because um we actually knew each other we went to high school together and mm -hmm. i was not doing music at all there I was not, it wasn't even until I got out and like me and my baby daddy and him all went to high school together. Mm -hmm. So we was at one of our friends studios one day and I had just finished recording and he had came in and my baby daddy told him like, you know, she in the back. He was looking, he was like, where she at? He was like, she in the back. And he came in and he just wanted to like hear my shit. And he was listening. He like, how you get so raw so fast? I'm like, shit, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just talking my shit. Like, I'm talking how I talk crazy. So mm -hmm. I'm putting it on the beat, make it sound good. <laughs> That's all it is, dude. And he had this other song that was kind of like a popish song, cause like I said, I never say I'm a rapper. I say I'm an artist because I make R&B music, I make pop music. I make hip hop. I make drill. Fuck is you talking about? I got a UK drill song, y'all. Y'all gotta hear. No, nah, we gotta hear that shit. I got, I, I, <laughs> y'all. It's so, it's so crazy. And he, I played him that song, and he was like, he he was like, all right, let me get on this song. And he was sitting there like trying to figure out like how he's gonna go on it. And his wife Kirsten was there too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna play you this song, but I'm like, you know, don't listen to it. This this for the ladies. And it was called Shake That Ass. And as soon as I started playing, he like, nah, this this the one. And it's crazy because I never even thought like it was gonna be a big song like it turned out to be. I literally like working in a club. I have a lot of friends that are dancers. My mom used to dance, so mm -hmm. like I don't give a fuck. I just wanted to like make music like for my friends to like turn up to, and it just happened to be the one. <laughs> but I don't know, like that vibe right there, and that's just me personally. Like that's a vibe like I fully ain't even master yet type shit. Cause you know, being a hood nigga, shit like that, like. Making a song like that ain't one of those, I'm gonna wake up and just say, yo, this some club shit. Like, I feel like club shit, before this little TikTok wave, that's what was taking people off. Yeah, yeah, if you're, if the club, players, and that shit don't even really matter no more, and that shit's crazy. Like, that shit don't even the matter The social no more. media controls everything, and TikTok more than anything. But you're on TikTok now. I am, but TikTok's not even my strongest platform. I actually stream really well. So that's why, like, even if you go look at my stuff, I don't have a lot of visuals because they they flag me for sexual explicitness and all types. Because my sister's like YouTube mm -hmm. famous. She been doing YouTube since she was 16 years old before people was really doing that shit. Mm -hmm. And that's how she makes all her money. And she said they got like a new person working there that basically be flagging everything. Like I heard that's why they took down NBA Young Boys videos. Yeah. Because they're flash. They're she's going back and she's flagging or he she whoever it is flagging 
everything. I'm not gonna lie, we got demonetized a couple of that's times. That's what I'm saying. And I don't even be talking that crazy. And, I feel like I'm not chilling. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so like, imagine my videos. Yeah. They super do it. So I don't really put out a lot of videos, but it doesn't matter because my music streams so well. And so like. But even the first time we had a conversation, I'm not gonna front. We was talking about that, and I actually did tell the team about that. No cap. When I first told them, yo. I want to interview Bob Banks. It's because of that conversation. <laughs> you was talking about, yo, like, all right, the YouTube numbers and streaming, the big difference between mm -hmm. the two. But it's like, even me being an interviewer, like, even now getting into music, making my own music, I didn't really know how important streams was because to me, YouTube seemed like you, the biggest platform. You don't, you don't eat off of YouTube no more, but, for real. You stream, you know how much, you, how much you get way more for a stream than you do for a view, view. on YouTube. See, I didn't know that. I, I make all my money off streams. But, my my YouTube don't really like like make revenue. All of my shit is streams. So like, what's some advice to get your streams up? Cause I don't know. It, it come like that shit just came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, and it's like so. My biggest streaming platform right now is Spotify, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know this. Like you know when you upload your songs to like the dis distro sites and everything. When you make, you need to go and like make a. Spotify artist account mm -hmm. to link your stuff together and you can go in there and when your song is uploaded You can pitch your own song to like playlists And stuff like you don't have to have a label or a team to pitch your songs to playlists. I'm independent I'm not signing no label. Mm -hmm. So like I literally Pitched I was going in there pitching my stuff and major playlists was picking it up because if they like the song and it's good They gonna, put they it gonna pick it up. Yeah, nah no artist has ever came up here and gave that advice. And but, another thing, you uh -huh. gotta keep once you drop on them distros, like on them the Spotify's and stuff. Stay consistent. You gotta keep doing it because once they pick you up, they're gonna keep picking you up if you're consistent because their algorithm is just gonna keep sucking you in. That's the thing. You gotta know your algorithm, just like with IG. Like <clears throat> I know when to post. Mm -hmm. That's I know like when my numbers are the highest. Like, a lot of people post during what's, the day. What's a good post I, time? I never so knew everybody is different. You have to literally look at your insights. Mm -hmm. A lot of people post during the day because they feel like people are up. I post at night because even though I'm posting at ten o'clock in the morning, I will wake up to thousands. Of what's the name? Because that morning, that next morning, I'm at the top of everybody's shit. And what you doing? You in your bed? You scrolling through IG in the morning. You not you people do that in the club, but people don't do that in the club. Like they say, you don't spend the whole day scrolling through IG like you really do in the morning when you relax and laying in your bed. You really focusing, going clicking people's shit like you can't do that on the go during the day. So it's no reason to post during the day for me. Nah. I'm not gonna front like when you put it like that, it makes sense. But you don't people don't usually think like cause I right, for instance, like me, I don't post pictures unless it's between five and seven o'clock. I feel like that's when people getting off of work, everybody active, everybody looking. But like, I post my shit at 10 o'clock. I'll be 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. My friends would be like, no, no, no. I'd be like, this is my algorithm. You have to know your own algorithm, though. Damn. And once you learn your shit and you consistently do it, it's going to like how people begin shadow ban, even though they say it's not a real thing. It's a thing. The shadow banning. Shadow ban is like when they start like censoring you and hiding you and like people don't be seeing you all the time. Mm -hmm. They That's called shadow banning. And <clears throat> you like... They'll shout out ban you. I just shout out ban you if you say the word nude, if you cuss, if you speak like about drugs. Like if you say, bring you me cuss. some weed. I posted on my story one day, like somebody bring me some weed and they flagged me for it and they shadow ban me. If I say like, host la 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 la, like, I don't know, like a cuss. Like if I say bitch, host slut, like they'll, I was they'll, say you can curse, they'll you? flag you for that. And they'll shadow ban you so that people can't see you. Like, they turn your interactions down. And they had that sensitivity thing going because they're like, they can't really control what people look at, even with kids for real. Mm. So they just started censoring people. And now they're trying to get out of that where they did. They're doing this thing where you can just decide if you want to make your stuff sensitive to bad words. Because people keep complaining about it messing up the algorithm. Or like, you can get shadow banned. Like, whenever I'm ready to drop a video, these hoes hate me so much. I don't even know I never did nothing to them. <laughs> they be flagging me. It could be a bitch you don't like. You like don't just know, don't shit? like you. Yes, just be reporting your stuff. That will get you shadow banned. What? Yes, yes. But you know what? I feel like it got worse recently. I'm not going to lie. It like, did. After Facebook bought Instagram, it just went left. Like, because... I'm not gonna lie. Anybody who know me, uh, anybody from New York, I feel like you got banned from Facebook like seven times. 
Facebook jail is a real thing. Like, I done got banned from Facebook for a month, weeks. Like, it gets crazy. That's... But after Facebook on Instagram, it's like anything you put... No cap, the other day, I got reported on Instagram for something I posted two months ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, because somebody, somebody went and reported your shit. That's what it is. And the thing is, you know why Facebook did that? Because it's like how, I'm tr- who, who was it? Did they say Lyft bought Uber or Uber bought Lyft, something like that? I think Uber bought Lyft. You slow one platform down to bring awareness to the other. So mm-hmm. then it started making people get back on Facebook. Because now if you notice, like your reels, when you post reels, they're recommended to Facebook because they're yeah. trying to bring them mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. So they purposely doing that. That They knew Damn. you... you you literally buy out your competition and you, you bring the traffic, their traffic, to your site. So you, you're you making double, if not triple the money. I ain't gonna lie. Maybe I'm not cut out for business like I thought I was. Because all, all this shit is new to me. This shit sound like a, a fucking complex idea that somebody came up with to just say, yo, fuck it. This is how we but gonna they run this did shit. It so that they can control who's in control of it because you have to think like them to know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't have that mindset. Damn. A lot of people that use those platforms don't mm-hmm. have that mindset. But for me, even off the social media itself, how's your performance and shit like? How's that going? Like, for me. Y'all, I love. Okay, so it's this thing about me. People think it's so weird. I got contacts in right now. I can see you. Mm-hmm. But normally, I only wear one contact. It's That's a mad weird. Because people don't <laughs> people think they don't know this. I'm very shy, honestly. And mm-hmm. I don't come off as that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I'm as I told you, I'm socially awkward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, One contact like, is mad awkward. I'm mad awkward. <laughs> I because I'm shy, people people don't think I'm shy because I get a lot, a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. So they think I like attention a lot. And I really don't. So like when I'm performing or like when I'm going to host, I could when I go I had one contact in, so I could see enough to be good and know what I'm doing, but I don't see as much. Whereas I'm nervous, where I could see like I'm looking at the crowd for real, for mm. real. I don't like I don't like that. Like I don't like that. Shit. You get stage fright? No, I don't because I can't see you. I don't care. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. I would I literally normally would mm. have stage fright, but if I can't see you, I don't care. Like, I mean, everybody got a method to their madness. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's my thing. People think I'm crazy, and I am. No, nah, I was about to say you definitely are, cause one contact is not regular. <laughs> yeah, that's I put I just put okay. in I just put in two at the airport. Oh, when you just landed? Yes. Yes. Now you was ready for this interview. You came here ready. I go front. Speaking about that, I kind of definitely feel bad. Gotta let them know today we were super fucking late. We not usually. I was like, on time, even though he was like, "So you gonna be on time? So here you gonna be on time?" I'm yes, yeah, super on time. But you gotta understand, it's like dealing with artists. Like, all right, now that you're an artist now, feel me, fully established, you're doing your thing. You come off a little different from other artists. Like, you're a little more punctual. You feel me? You're well spoken. Like, artists come off as like tardiness makes you look incompetent. And being a rapper, they already feel like you're incompetent because of how you talk. Exactly. And they're going so. No, but a lot of them are. Like, they come here, they no, say know. anything, they do anything, and it's just like, they have this attitude like, I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm still lit. And yeah. I just hate that whole mindset. I don't want to be the pretty dumb girl. You don't want to be London Tipton at all. <laughs> was she that cute? For what she was at that age, she was very cute. I ain't gonna front. When I was watching Street For Life, that market, she was... Yeah, I was gonna say, when I was watching Street Life, London Tipton was bad as fuck. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. She had it. Y'all, y'all, y'all thought a lot of people was bad as fuck when we was younger. I ain't gonna front. I did. The only y'all person was, that stayed was bad was Zendaya. Zendaya. Tip. Nah, Lizzie McGuire. Zendaya's not even in that same age range as that, so that don't count. Nah, she count. She count. <laughs> no, she's bad, but she don't count because... That she was not on Disney Channel like that when they was yeah, sweet when, like, life with Zach and Zach, yeah. Like they're way older than her. Yeah. Like Ariana too. Yeah. Ariana Grande. Ariana, yeah. Ariana, Ariana Grande, she, she lost different. Me. She different. But isn't isn't she like she's like foreign, right? No. I don't know. Is she just white? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I got a friend named Esther, and a lot of people think she's just white because her hair's blonde, but she's Albanian. And I'll be like, nah, nah, Esty different. Like, yeah. Hey, that foreign, that foreign way is a little different. I ain't gonna lie, a lot of them people fell off, <laughs> though. Like, you be looking at certain shit, and I don't know, being a child. Disney star. That's, yeah, being a child star. Yeah. Really will that will really fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. I, it will really fuck you up. But I don't know. I feel like that comes with any feel. Like, if you jump into any feel too early, It'll automatically be an automatic crash. Like you moving too fast. But that's why I said, like, about your career, like even listening to how your career went, I feel like you was moving at the right pace because you said you was been singing, you was been doing all that. Yeah, I I don't know. It's just it just came back a little too naturally. So you think you just came out naturally raw as fuck, or you think you was building it up over the years? You um, always had it. I think when I started rapping, mm-hmm. I'm I'm I can't remember how it's like. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie and it's not even like the two my own whore like I'm not even trying to be arrogant about it but like um 100% 100% I came in raw as fuck 100% because like I know you've been noticing I've been doing the on the block ones because mm -hmm. I came out mainstream because I'm not stupid mm -hmm. I know what sells I know what they could put on the radio. I know what they could play at concerts. I know what, let's be honest, these little white kids are going to buy because mm -hmm. African-American and other minority families, our parents don't pay for concert tickets. They're not paying for streaming Word. sites. They're not doing that. Those are the things that are, like, like brings revenue for artists. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted, I wanted to make money. Like, I wanted to pay my bills. Like I've been a hood star. I was a hood star when I was selling bottles. Word. Like so, I ain't I ain't gotta do that. But then I use my little freestyles to remind y'all, like, no, nah, yeah, like I could still spit. Like I could still walk you. Like don't don't do that. Don't do that. I could still I could still walk you. But mm -hmm. I think that that was a big thing for me because how I came out so mainstream. A lot of people felt like I couldn't rap. I used to get so much flack. Like, oh, it's a popularity contest. She got a cheat code. She don't even rap for real. She can't rap. And I had to get on these little freestyles and be like, I'm running circles around your kid. Calm down. <laughs> like, <laughs> But I don't know. I feel like a lot of that stems from being a female rapper in Chicago because we had that same conversation earlier. I really can't name a female rapper from Chicago off the top of my head at any and that, given moment. That is, and that is crazy and that's sad because like, <laughs> that's sad I promise crazy. you every show I ever been on, mm -hmm. except for I except I did summer summer smash. You know mm -hmm. that is lyrical lemonade. Yeah. Shout out to Cody and Bar Berto because they booked me. They put they really put on for me. I fuck with them. I feel like my city really support me now. But I did Oreo Fest. Like I was the only girl in there. A lot of shows I get, I was the only girl. Like even I just did a WGCI cipher that they, they uh, was powered by Sprite. Mm -hmm. I was the only girl in my group. Like I feel like I'm like I'm always the only female. And that also pushes me because I gotta compete with these niggas. I could rap ten times better than these niggas. I could wrap circles around them, but y'all are still gonna give them the play and say that they're better than me because they're a nigga. They could be mumbling on the track. Mm -hmm. So I be having to come ten times as hard. And not all females in Chicago are built to do that. And I think that when I came out, it was different because it's like. It's, it was a it was a little meme where it was like date a girl from Chicago. They said and the girl rapping G Herbo hard as hell in the background. That's really how our female artists are, and so they made us feel like that's how you like you gotta be a hood star mm -hmm. to make it. So when I came out, they was like, oh you're too sexy, oh you're too this. It's not gonna work until they seen that shit was working. I was and labels was would come working. to me and they'd be like, you're like a breath of fresh air because we get all these manly females and we can't market them. Mm -hmm. They used to tell me like, I really don't care if you could rap or not because I could give you one of their songs and you could sell it better than they ever could, whether mm -hmm. they're better than you or not. And if you're not marketable, they don't care. They don't care how good you can write. People write songs every fucking day. I was about to say, it's a lot of songs. Like, what are you talking about? A lot. People write songs every day. They don't care if you could rap or not. If you're not personable and they can't market you, they don't care. So when I came out, they like, damn, who is this? Like, she she came out of nowhere. Like, mm -hmm. and she talking her shit, but I put that sex appeal on it. Whereas I was like, I could compete with the niggas, but I ain't gotta act like one. Definitely. So, so like, what's your whole strategy on being a female artist coming out of Chicago? Like, where you plan on going with this, and like, what route you plan on taking? To the top. It's only up from here, you know. You know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. You think what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Um, I mean, like, I really just be making music. I got some new songs that's coming out, some big feet shots. I was about to say, you play some for us. I like the vibe on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't know. That's what I'm saying. I got some 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 big features coming. You plan on ever dropping a mixtape, EP, anything? So I dropped the EP in August, uh-huh. titled Big Bank. And let, let's get into that. I got my name Baja Banks because, obviously, my stepfather named me Baja. Like, that's not my government name. My government name is going to come way for it, way for it. Mm-hmm. But Baja, a lot of people don't know that it's Arabic. It actually means splendor and brilliance. Brilliance. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I ain't going for it. We go wrong does. with that. It does. And my real name is Vivian Bolden. Mm-hmm. And so, you know who King Louis is? Yeah. I was going to say, you're crazy. You don't know who he come is. Come on, come you're on, come on. You're crazy. You don't know who my man is. Come on, like, this is my job. We got to know who these <laughs> niggas is. He found out my name was Vivian. And mm-hmm. he used to call me Miss Banks. He was like, all right, Miss Banks, Vivian Banks. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me buy her banks. It just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, that should sound and good. And that's dead ass how I got that name. So you ever did any work with King Louis? So I haven't. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. But you know, he has stopped making music for a while. Yeah, I was about to say, he, he When he I started, he, wa- he wasn't making music. He wasn't. And so he just now kind of like, he just released some shit. He just now got back into making music. One of my brothers is actually his manager. So that's mm-hmm. why I was like, so crazy. So like, what Chicago artists you plan on working with soon? You got coming? You feel me? Like, what's in the stash? What we don't know about? I'm not, I'm like, you want, like, I, I can't get a secret away, but I definitely, Plan on mm-hmm. working with Herbie G Herbo, of course. Who don't love her? That's my boy right there. I I I needs me a Dirk feature. I mm. need me a Dirkio Smirkio feature. Y'all know, y'all know. Um, one of the female artists that you said you hadn't heard of that I was happy, Dreezy. You know, I can't believe you don't know who Dreezy is. Nah, I only know Tink. That's and crazy. I love Tink. Dreezy and how we said Tink started out more rapping. Mm-hmm. Dreezy been rapping like she be going. Nuts. She's one of those lyrical artists that she don't really get her flowers like she should. Mm-hmm. And that's how it was with Tink. But Tink going crazy now. She get her Yeah, she on her R&B shit. Tink singing like a motherfucker. She and going nuts. <laughs> going got, nuts. Got you in there ready to kick your nigga out. Word. <laughs> like, Word. I need some, I need some, I need some females. I need some, some Tink and some Dreezy. And I got songs with other, like, uh, I have a lot of music with male artists from Chicago, obviously. And I think that a lot of that has to do with because the women in Chicago, they literally like pit us against each other. It's a lot of animosity mm-hmm. and competition. They're like, we can't come together like the girls in Texas. Like Mona I'm Leo, about to say Texas, they lit. Um, Ken the Man, um, Libra, like, you know, they could come together on songs. We don't we don't really know how to assimilate like that because labels it's already hard for labels coming to Chicago because they're like, we're so filled with violence, they yeah. barely want to touch us. Yeah. But they'll come in there and they'll say, we'll take seven guys and one girl. So y'all are putting us at each other's throat. Y'all don't give us the opportunity to want to come together because we always see each other as competition. And I mm-hmm. felt like when I came in the game, like I had a lot of people turn cold on me, like a lot of female artists that fucked with me in the beginning because they see me as competition. They felt like I was coming to steal their spot, and I was. Mm-hmm. And it's not even like it was on purpose. They just come with this shit. It's you, part of the game. We snatching dreams. Yeah, like, like you, you want that dream. You got to take it from somebody else. That's how it is. Exactly. Especially with female artists in Chicago, and it's not even like I don't speak highly of them because I always do. I always stress how we need to support females more, but you can only push so far without that support back. Yeah, definitely. And then you go to that point where you, every man for himself, you want to do this, we gonna do that, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna walk you every time. <laughs> It's the confidence for me. At least you know, <laughs> like you, every you time. bullshit. But look, on a more personal Chicago question, like, what was the impact of like Vaughn dying and all that in Chicago? Like, how that hit Chicago? Cause you feel me out here when Pop died, it was crazy. Yeah. But like, for me, I'm not from Chicago, and I know like Vaughn was making his way out of Chicago. So how that went out there? It, it, it was insane because it just seemed like when it happened. You know how they say everything, like, it comes in threes. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, like, niggas start dropping. Like, mm-hmm. and he got kids, so it's always hard when you got kids. Like, the city really supported him. Everybody wanted to see him win. So the fact that him leaving Chicago and we seen him win and we pushing him and for you to go and die somewhere else by a nigga that's not even from your city. Yeah. And it, and it was crazy because we, get, we, we got artists at each other's throat, but everybody was supporting him. 
Yeah. Everybody was supporting him. And so it just, it shook us. It's like when, when Duck passed, like, it shook us. It was the same effect. And even though they was at each other's throats, like, we was supporting the two of them. Like, we like, yeah, like, we supported Dirk to get him out of there. Mm-hmm. We was pushing them. And it's like, y'all didn't, it, it wasn't even y'all that did it to each other. Nah, see, now, the Vaughn impact, it definitely hit New York a little bit, but Duck shit hit New York a little harder. One, because Duck is, like, one of the pioneers of this shit. Yeah. And two, because, like, even if you watch Duck interviews, like, he was a solid nigga. Like, for what he was saying, like, even when Vaughn passed, like, don't yeah. get me wrong, they, they talk their shit, but... He was real about it, like, are you feel me? Like, yeah. that's still crazy. Yeah. So even that shit, I don't know. I feel like when artists like that pass, it it pained everybody because it's like, damn, like, y'all niggas was doing so good. Y'all had all it this sh- It shaked the city, but then it's like, you also got to understand that this shit happened to us every day, Word. every hour. Like, we lose people more than y'all do. And I know, we, y'all had that whole shot right shit. That's what I'm saying. We lose people, and it be... People that are so close to us, like we losing the same person over and over again. Mm-hmm. So it's like, damn, you getting double time, triple time. You losing three niggas that's brothers, cousins in the same week. Yeah. I ain't going front. Yeah. I don't know. Chicago is diff. But being from Chicago, because me being from New York, I hate this. So I got to ask somebody from Chicago. Like them YouTube pages that make it sound like, oh, gangland. Like, oh, my God, these are the most dangerous guys in Chicago. Like... When you be looking at those shit, like, that shit's not just bullshit, or it's just me. We hot. We on fire. It's that, but, like, even I, nah. I was watching, I was nah, watching. Nah, we, they, and I'm not even going to say we, they out there killing kids. Killing kids. They out there, one kid kill a kid, they going up to high schools retaliating against every kid they know that knew that kid. Like, and these is grown-ups telling these kids go do this stuff. Like, we hot. We is hot. Damn. So what you like, saying? That's what I'm some saying. Of them, some we of them walking in broad daylight into schools, sh- killing kids. That's crazy. That's it's it's Damn. stupid. Like it's not even like it's just adults that are at war. Like y'all got kids at war, but y'all got a lot of adults at war. We got adults at war with these kids, and Damn. like that don't that don't even make sense. Damn. So growing up in an environment like that, how you feel like that molded you yourself? Like, you feel me? Just as a person. I mean, like, a lot of people be scared of Chicago, but like being from Chicago, you're not scared. Like we see this shit every day. It it don't it don't really affect me. Like I don't be scared to go outside. I don't be scared to go to the club. I don't be because it's it used to be it happens in certain neighborhoods. This shit happened in broad day, like downtown while you shopping at Neiman's. They don't care. They popping out anywhere. And it's it's been lately as of COVID that niggas feel like they invincible. And it's sick, honestly. That shit's sick. And it don't it don't make me live in fear because I'm from there. So it's like I've lived here my entire life. I know I know these people. I know mm-hmm. the people getting killed. I know the people doing killing. Like it don't it 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 don't put no fear in my heart. It's an everyday thing. You get you. It's and it's crazy to say you're numb to it, mm-hmm. but you get so used to it that even when you see the alerts on the news about a kid dying, it's just like damn. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Look, true words. I'm I'm kind of tight. Ross not here because I know Ross would love this, but even when me and Ross be talking, because the whole point of this podcast, other side is two point of view, two point of views. You feel me? I'm from hood. Ross from burbs. Like. We really two different people. Yeah. We come together, though. We talk to one person. We share insight on both point of views. You feel me? But, like, it done been times, like, me and Russ talking on a personal tip, and he like, damn, I think I've been chilling with you too long. Certain shit happened, and it's like, it don't feel the yeah. same. It don't affect me the same no more. Like, and, and it's weird. And it's like, he used to tell me all the time, like, when we first started chilling, he like, damn, bro, like, I don't think that's regular. You need to see a therapist about that. <laughs> But I, I PTSD. Had, I that's why I had to tell him. I had to tell him like, yo, I ain't gonna front when Herb said that. I ain't gonna. That it's was like real, it's a real that was the realest shit I ever it's heard. It's a real thing, and unless you live through it, you'll never understand. You'll never understand. It it make no sense that I don't feel safe when I'm around too much people. Like yeah. a pe- I always tell people, <laughs> large groups of people make me nervous, but it's like I be there. I be yeah, there I was about to say I be there. Fuck it. I, I could be in a group of four people. A nigga might drive past and shoot the whole block up. It don't matter. It don't matter. You get got anywhere. I ain't gonna front. My mom told me that. She said, anybody's touchable. Like, and I, I stuck with that shit my whole life. I don't seem the, the toughest people I think I ever met in my life get touched. So that shit just be making me look over my shoulder all the time. But I don't know. Like, 
Damn, this shit is crazy. <laughs> like, that's all you can say in a situation like this. Cause and it's, it's like, sick that that's all you can say. It's sad. Yeah, that's it really just, is. It's just like, damn. But because I don't know. it's like we see this shit too much. We do, but that's like shit, we in Baghdad. Word. But that shit do show character because the fact that you could say, yo, you feel me? That's how Chicago is. You up here with a smile on your face. You in New York. You having fun. You still rapping. You trying to get the fuck out of there. It just shows. You know what's crazy? It wouldn't it wouldn't kill me to live in Chicago for the rest of my life. Yeah, I said I'd That's my York. home. I know how to maneuver like them them my people. So it don't it don't it wouldn't kill me like how people like I gotta get out. It, but it's different for men than it is for women. I was about women. to say it's different because it's different. Look at Dolph. Yeah. That that shit, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. That shit shook the world to me because That no, that yeah. I didn't think Dolph was ever gonna get touched. He yeah. was at never, a, never, a level never. of his life that his he city wasn't, even wasn't supposed to let that happen. On that street shit like that. Yeah, his city was not supposed to let that happen. But it wasn't supposed to happen to Nipsey either. You right. He was on a level where he should have been untouchable. He wasn't even out here gang banging like that no more. I ain't gonna front. You're right. That, that, like, that shit was crazy. And it's always the one you least expect it be your right hand man right there. Been with you every day. Word. I ain't gonna lie. Word. Like. I feel like, but even when we was talking about how you said you feel like COVID made it worse, I feel like COVID had like this domino effect on the hood, even the world alone. Because it's either it went two ways. People was losing money or people was making money. And that's fucked up because the people, people that's losing money. People was taking money. That's what I'm saying. People that's <laughs> losing money, they become haters. They like, fuck it. Yeah, and then it starts the violence. It starts and the, the violence. And the violence was already there. So it really didn't need no push. And then... It was like the vaccine made police get laid off, quit because they was like, we not getting this shit. Like we not finna almost die mm -hmm. to protect motherfuckers that, you know, that's that's how I. Yeah. That's like I, yep. I get it. I get yep. it. I'm not saying I fuck with the police, but y'all look at us like ops. So y'all like we not finna die on a shot trying to protect the motherfuckers that shooting at us. Yep. And that also <laughs> yep. taking them off the streets. That just made it like. Motherfuckers think this is GTA. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it's looking real GTA out here right now. I ain't going to lie. It's looking real nasty. You got 13, 15, 14-year-olds stealing cars for, like, broad daylight like it's nothing. And it's not even little boys no more. It's little girls. I was about to say, it's getting crazy. It's girls. But how you feel like, like, being from Chicago and all that, how you feel like Chicago is portrayed to the world? Like, you think Chicago's in a good light, or you feel like the world just, like, look at Chicago, like, Chirac still? I hate, I hate, I Everybody from Chicago hate, hate Chirac. that Chirac shit, and I feel like a lot of that Chirac shit had to do with Nick Cannon when he made that movie. And I, I'm sorry, that was not a good movie. It was not. It was <laughs> I not. never watched that it, shit so I know ass. it wasn't. You can't have a nigga that's not from Chicago come and tell our story. That's crazy. The shy is more accurate. It's not, I was about to say, the shy is not, not super accurate, saying, but it's but more accurate. It's more accurate and you got real people from Chicago that live this shit every day that experience this, so it's like they really put in their life into mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. That shit, that, like, who was he supposed to be in that? Cheap Keith? I have no fucking idea. What the fuck? That nigga looked like he was <laughs> fucking doing voodoo in the back room. Talking about this is shy, right? This is my city. Go home. Go home, Roger. <laughs> like that, painted us in a more negative light than we were already in. Nah, definitely. And when you put a darkness on a place that's already shaded, we don't get to shine. Mm -hmm. That also hurt with being an artist because it's like, damn, yeah, y'all got good music, but the shit that's attached to y'all, the violence that's attached to y'all, labels don't even want to deal with it. So we're going to go, we're going to go to New York and they got the same sound as y'all right now. And they a little bit calmer. They, they ain't as hot as y'all. But really, y'all are, but y'all aren't on that platform yeah. here. Y'all not televised like we are to show that shit. So it's like, we're going we gonna to go up there real quick. And we already got all the, all the offices there anyway. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say one police We're not a music they, town. They like, shit. we make good music, but like, there's no labels there. Like, the, the, we got Machine. That's who Herbie's side to. Mm -hmm. We got Machine. We got ATS. That's who I don't know if you know Heavy Steppers. No. They signed it. They were signed to them. Mm -hmm. I, I, they, I think they still are. I really don't know. But we don't really got. We don't. We don't have like label homes there. We don't got big offices that's dedicated to like music promotion. We don't have that. 
So we're literally reaching out for help, you see? and y'all are clouding us. Now, 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 now it's starting to make sense. Like now that you you came here, said that like now it makes sense. This why. is the mecca. Yeah, like while Herb is trying to start, they they trying to start their own label. Dirk and them trying to start their own label while they were yeah, so like, independent. Yeah, like that's why we got OTF. Like, yeah. We I, I ain't gonna front. Now it's making a little more sense why they was indie for so long. I mean, they had a wave though, but they really like Herb is still independent. Like when he was talking about that shit, like, and that shit is crazy. I don't know. Damn. I feel like I ain't know a lot about Chicago. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I ain't know a because lot. Because you hear about it, but you hear from people that's not from there. Yeah. So, like, you hear from the people that come there and they, they come back and they be like, let me tell you about Chicago. Mm -hmm. Let me show you the life I live in Chicago. Like, I don't front. That means I gotta go to Chicago. Yeah, I gotta you need go. to come have a shy. What's the so? What's what's the vibe out there? Like what y'all do out there for fun? Like besides all the crazy shit, how is Chicago in a good light? We used to be so like we're not a strip club city. Also, we're not. I about to say I don't think y'all. But are. club O baby, <laughs> where you doing? Yo, club O got to pay you. Yeah, so go, that go from... up. They did. I used to say Chicago made me O oh, pay me. Mm -hmm. I ain't rent it. I was touching six figures before I ever picked up a mic, slinging bottles. I think one of my first songs I dropped, I had a bar in there that I said, went from serving, uh, I was like, I was like, went from serving bottles to spitting lyrics. That's, mm -hmm. I was like, so, it was so corny because I just started, <laughs> but it was real tea. Like, I, I was getting money from bottles. So I was like, the, the strip clubs was lit and it wasn't a regular club, it was a strip club. I need to see some ass shakers, titties in my face, something like, <laughs> give me hype. Like, <laughs> we got a little club, clubs downtown, but like, Working in the birds, we always be like, they ain't getting no money downtown. They they bottom girls gotta do stuff like split tips and they monitor who they let in the door. Like they'll turn away certain artists because they'll be like, we don't want the gang affiliation that's connected to you because we don't want them shooting in the club. We don't want them shooting out the club. Like that that's my thing with a lot of big cities, and that's I hate that shit. The fact that Y'all are more accepting than us, though. Nah, I ain't go front. New York recently just got bad. Like, I, for instance, the, the year Pop Smoke was supposed to do Rolling Loud, they dubbed him because him, Tutu, all of them were supposed to do Rolling Loud. This was the first year that they really wasn't on it too bad, and we ended up fighting. I was finna see. Yeah, I'm like, gonna say, I see Flock and <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, K Flock was bunny hopping, trying to fight Ron Suno. Like, yeah, I don't know what that was. Y'all was getting busy for sure. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, they move super scary. We do the same. We do the same thing at the festivals out in Chicago. But we get festivals more than y'all do. Y'all don't get, fe like, we get Lala, we get Pitchfork, we get Lyrical Lemonade because Wait, Cole Lala, is from Chicago. Lala is in, um, in Chicago? Lala Palooza is in Chicago, yeah. I swear to God, I never knew yeah, that. Yeah, Lala is in Chicago. And then Cole came with the Summer Smash mm -hmm. with Lyrical Lemonade and Speaker Box, like, and he from Chicago, so, you know, it's like, yeah. I didn't know that either. You didn't know Cole's from Chicago? I thought he was from like a, a farm town or some shit. Mm, he was, he from the Chicago. way he be making it sound in his interviews, like, yeah, I'm from like a small town. Like, I don't like, like you know the birds, but like yeah. he from like he he from Illinois, so but he from Chicago, like he grew up with my baby daddy and all their friends and everything. Like mm -hmm. like how you say y'all be together, y'all two different people. Yeah. Like, oh, alright, so bad. Now yeah, 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 I kinda yeah, get yeah, an yeah. understanding. And but, he made a platform for us, even though we weren't his market. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. he really made a platform for us. I'm not gonna front. Cole took this shit to a different level. Even we had um. I remember when he first started having this shit. I ain't gonna front. We had a videographer up here named Mooch, and he was even saying that like Cole was revolutionary for this whole video shit. Like he really brought light to being a videographer. Like he could literally shoot anybody instant fame. Instant, like literally, still now. Instant. If he shoots you, you're going up. You're going up. I that's that's how you. I ever first seen the holiday. Yeah, I was gonna say holiday. It was video on. Cold. It was Me, on his shit. That's how. That's how. That's how, that's how you seen. Juice Shout World. out holiday. So that's that's my how you boy. seen Juice World. Uh huh. He brought him to light, and it's not like you didn't know he was there. It was like you didn't know he was there? He put him on that platform. I ain't gonna front. Ju even Juice. Ah, damn, that was a crazy one. Yeah, too. you know, he just had his like tribute. I ain't gonna front. I cried when Juice died. I'm not gonna lie. Everybody did. That that was. Everybody did. That was different. That he was. He spoke to you differently. Yeah, he did. Like he definitely he, did. He was still talking that gangster shit, but it was so lyrical that you forgot it was gangster shit. You forgot. I you swear forgot. To God. 
You was a singing gangster at that point. He had the whole hood singing his shit. Word. So Juice was big in Chicago for what it was. Yeah, he was for sh- for sure. Nah, that's good to hear, son. I ain't going to front. I love that his legacy is still going on and shit, because that's one of the artists I can honestly say, like, I was actually a fan of. Like, I see Juice where I fuck around and take a picture. Like, yeah, we, we here <laughs> with the gang. Like, that's crazy. Damn. I don't know. Being from Chicago, coming to New York, all that, like, what's the difference in the vibe, you think, though? I feel like I'm home here. I don't know. I don't, I don't. There's no difference the difference for you. like people do know. Is any New York artist you plan on working with? You think you got something with you trying to... <laughs> Look, I'm not spilling no tea. I'm just saying any New York artist you you plan on working let with. Let me... Some... Look, look. Nah, for real. Let me, let me, let me put y'all on. Mm-hmm. New York artist y'all may not have heard of. He kind of, he kind of raw. Uh-huh. He kind of raw. I think, I think he came and walked on one of my tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, his name YKD. Uh-huh. <laughs> he from the Bronx. Y'all need to check him out. He going crazy. He's going crazy. Um, I also, I was listening to this girl, London Hill, is that her name? Yeah. She, she fire. I can see you doing the song with Lola Brooks. Yeah. Lo- I love yeah, her, I love, that's the other I love, name. I love, I love Lola the She's so little, she got that motherfucking voice though. I love like, Lola the Dead. Like, she be going Lola crazy, Dad. she be talking her shit. What she say, don't play with it, don't yeah, play I, with I, it, don't play I, with I, it. I, I, so. Soon as she got on that motherfucker, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Yo, I swear to God, I always said that's one of the... The first female New York artist that I want to pay. Like me yes, personally, between yes. her or Young Devin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, any... I heard of Young Devin. She mm-hmm. young. She, she. She young, but no, she don't No pay. pun intended. Yeah, I was. But yeah, no, no she, funny she shit. She young, I heard because they were saying like she was young, but nah, that Lola Brooke, and she's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> she nice. I love Lola. Nice Let to me look not at. even come up here. She nice to look at too. I was about to say because Lola, no, mm-hmm. like, Shit. Yeah, she going crazy. She she going crazy. Definitely. I seen she had that song with uh, what's her name, Malibu Mitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna front. I feel like New York is finally getting back to where we was. I feel like we had like a little dead point. With with pop. Yeah, like after pop, even before pop, a little bit before pop. Yeah, he came and yeah, he, he really came put the spotlight. Yeah, back he on came him. and brought it back. Oh, sleepy. Yeah. I love. I think we was talking about that when we was talking when mm-hmm. I was talking to my phone. friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm trying to get a song with Sleepy. I ain't gonna front. Sleepy is one of the New York artists that I actually could say I know on a personal level. Cool nigga. Like, I never got a bad vibe from him. That's one of those artists you talk to, I'm I 100% sure you can get a feature from him. He's not gonna be on no weird shit. He's not nobody who thinks, yo, I'm Sleepy Hollow. I'm the most famous yeah. nigga in the room. Like, he humble with it. That's yeah. my dog. Yeah, I can yeah. honestly say, and shout I, out Sleepy. I, I fuck with him. I yeah. fuck with him. I ain't gonna front. You go one of our lives too. When I was in here, spent my shit. Mm-hmm. And I had my tracks and shit going on. Remember that that song? I had I had um played a song when I was talking about it. But that song, mm-hmm. I, was, that's why I was I was thinking about him on that. I was thinking about him. On I that. ain't gonna front. On that, that shit shit to be crazy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. Dig it up, saying yeah. I ain't gonna front. Look, you feel me? We've been going for a little while. We're about to wrap this up. But before anything, we usually end off with. Advice you have for upcoming artists, especially upcoming female artists, being that you're a female, and what can we expect from you in the upcoming year coming up? So, first we're gonna start off with the advice. I always mm-hmm. tell people, never give up. Like, never give up. I don't give a fuck if they say you can't rap, you can't write. I don't give a fuck if you're cleaning toilets. Don't ever give up, because I told you, so many people came to me talking crazy, like, she can't rap, she can't mm-hmm. this. And last time I checked, what? I, who? Who, who got a McDonald's commercial? Who? Oh, oh. Oh, I say definitely oh, okay. McDonald's commercial. I got, I got, oh, 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 all right. I thought I couldn't rap, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Whatever. Never, never give up. And I think that even though I was in school, what, like, kept me still, like, pushing the music is my grandpa used to tell me, if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And so even though I went to school for dentistry and that was something he loved, mm-hmm. I needed to find what I loved. And... It motivated me to keep going. I also have a daughter, so you know, yeah, I got that. I got that natural motivation where I gotta mm-hmm. get it. Gotta you gotta get feed it. your kid. Like, yeah, I got it. Serious. I gotta. If I fall, she fall too, and I can never let her drown. Word. So, female artist, baby, talk your shit. Talk your shit. I don't give a fuck if it's about pussy. What Lil Wayne say? Of course, I talk about fucking pussy. Like everybody loves fucking pussy. I don't give a fuck. Everybody be like, why bitches come up? Y'all talk about pussy in y'all songs. Word. Why Why I can't talk about the shit that God gave me? Are you crazy? 
Are you crazy? I don't ever want to hear anybody say they don't want to hear about pussy. That's the fuck you do. I don't want to say everybody. You lying. Do. I don't so, give a fuck. So ladies, everybody if that's your pussy. shit, that's your stilo, you want to talk about how good your pussy is, you want to talk about making money off your pussy, do that shit. Because niggas will tell you and bitches will tell you don't do that shit. That's what's going up. Uh, city girls, what they talking about? Making money off their fucking cooch. They talking about making money off their cooch. Meg talking about popping that shit. Popping her fucking pussy. Popping her ass. Like, that's... Do, do what you think is you. Don't try to go gangster if that's not who you are. Don't try to go too mainstream if that's not who you are. Like I told you, I make all types of music. So me make dropping mainstream music is not out the ordinary to me. Because I grew up listening to a lot of it too. Mm-hmm. What was, it, what was the third one? What was the third one? What's your third thing, you asked me? <laughs> oh, what you got coming on this upcoming year? Be on the lookout for the tours. Yes, sir. I got some shows. I got some tours coming up. I got some videos dropping. I got some hot, hot artists, features dropping. Some artists that I know y'all. I know y'all playing up. No, just be, just be on the lookout. I Your girl has girl other face. side get free New York tour tickets. I feel like we should be there. We definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the one of the first blogs from New York to support me. Uh huh. Other side podcast. Other side podcast. Word. And we at other side studios, y'all. Make sure y'all pull up, get a little session in. I love the promotion. Like, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming up, and thank you for the amazing interview, Paha Banks. Other side. Pod. Thank you. For having me. Uh -huh. Thank you for showing me the vibes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, you dig what I'm sharing. <laughs> I really <laughs> fuck with y'all. It's a vibe. Like, when I can feel comfortable. Like, you know, sometimes interviews be real stiff. Like, people don't be, yeah. like, in tune. Like, I hate, don't sit here and ask me no questions on the fucking paper. Yeah, that shit is why. Like, don't do that. It's a vibe. And so, as long as we can vibe, you know, I'm always going to bring the vibe. Just, whatever. <laughs> That's why they think I'm from New York. Shit like that. That's why I think I'm from New York. Because I got the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Other side pod, we out.